we're going to be looking at a couple of libraries from Spitfire today. The first one that we're going to look at is the um, is the pull project from um, Oliver Patrice Wader, and uh, he is one of uh, Spitfire Audio Recordings. So not only do we have a library, we also have a recording project that's based on the uh, samples and the sounds that he used for this recording. And that's what I'm really seeing, a really cool thing that's happening with the Spitfire Audio Recordings, is that uh, they're taking these, these artists like Heinbach and some others and uh, Oliver here, uh, and they're not only producing um, recording projects, but they're taking the sounds and giving them to us in these uh, sample libraries. And so he recorded this, uh, this project in a pool house, and you can, you can just see the space here. And if you've ever been into, into one of these spaces, you, you just know they've got such a unique acoustic quality to them. Um, so he's recorded woodwind sections, and look at that ribbon microphone, the Coles. The ribbon mics are my favorite. Um, I don't know. It's just something uh, so beautiful and velvety about them. Um, and then here is his piano in his studio, and he's mic'd it up. And, uh, of course, we've got some ribbons here. And we've got a couple of pianos, some uh, woodwinds. And you can also buy the, buy the project. I think they did a listening uh, live stream of this entire project, and you can go back and, and catch that replay. But that's what we're going to take a look at first and just kind of go through some of the sounds. And it is another one of their $29 range, like the originals. will drop down. And they really focused on a lot of uh, almost like what they call meditative type of music. So I'm just going to um, just pull up the first, uh, first thing, the odd drone. And let's take a listen. And we'll play through some of these. We're going to have some fun today. So thanks for joining me. Uh, remember, all the links are going to be down in the description. Um, you know, thank you for all the support. And here we go. So this is like a drone pad vocals trio standing around the pool and capturing, listen to that, that ambience there. So you can use this like a bed type of thing. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's go. Ah, uh, swells. And this is where you get the dynamics. So instead of doing it by a MIDI control, they're actually doing it vocally. And if you hear a little crackling, uh, I am hitting this, this, it's hitting the CPU pretty hard, like at 40% sometimes, because um, I'm hitting 20 voices here. But that's got a unique sound um, to it. Here we go. Um, okay, so this is like some chanting. Yeah, that's kind of wild. And you have to listen to them in the context of the, um, of the actual songs uh, to really kind of get a feeling for where they fit in. And here's some more vocal swells. Na, 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 na. <laughs> and then we've got some woodwinds. Oh, yeah. So those flutes and woodwinds. You just get that real breathy. That's pretty cool. And um, swells. Now, and I like the fact that, they, that um, they're capturing more of the organic performance things instead of... Um, because you can't program stuff like that. Well, you can, but it's not as natural as if it was performed. And here again, you have a character 
that uh, is um, that just symbolizes and embodies the personality of the recording project and of the musician. So the musician is able to um, put his personality and his emotion into the library, and it makes it uniquely his. Um, and that is what makes these things so special. So we've got some, let's see, I saw some circular breathing. So, it just keeps that going. So some really interesting uh, woodwind textures, uh, pulsing swells. Just some very unique textures here. It's just more colors uh, for the for the palette. Now these are some solo voices. And you can hear that ambience uh, of that pool house. You've got the water and you've got the glass. And since we have three vocalists, um, it's you're able to kind of mix and match. Really cool. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the piano. Um, so now this now now when you think um, <laughs> when you think you can't felt a piano anymore, uh, they've given us a, tr a double felted piano. So uh, I was really curious about uh, about that. Um, and so we've got we've got a double felted. So let's take a listen. Let's take a listen. And then we can move this dynamic this dynamic range up to kind of get, dig into more because this SL88 is so soft, it's got such a soft action that I'm gonna pull that dynamic range up just a little bit. here. So we've got some delays that we can kick in. And that is um, that is synced to the host tempo. I'm going to change my host tempo to 100. Yeah. And we can adjust the blend of that delay. Just to have a little subtle delay in there makes it see what else we've got. So we've got the key release and the volume. Let's crank the reverb up a little bit. And up here we've got uh, some choices. Um, let's go to Beautiful Echo and listen to what that sounds like. So when you've triple felted something or double felted something, um, you're really uh, going for like more, it, it almost is like more of a percussive type of thing. And you've got a little bit of that fundamental coming out of that. And I like uh, hearing those uh, dynamic layers coming in when you really lay into it. And you hear all those little things going on. pedal noises and since it's double felted you hear the uh, it's almost a squishy sound that that you hear that felt just kind of going in and out of there that's nice very cool and for $29 it's a good uh, it's a good value to get some unique uh, one-of-a-kind textures um, very cool now this is taped 
a tape piano. So, you know, you, you don't want to put duct tape on a piano. Uh, if you're going to put any tape on it, make sure it's gaffer's tape that doesn't leave that residue. Listen, if you put duct tape on a piano, it's going to be a disaster. Uh, but, uh, but it gives you a different percussive thing. It's a nice muted type of sound. Not a lot of decay, uh, not a lot of decay because of the muted, um, the muted characteristic of it. And that's why we would crank that reverb up to kind of let that decay go. And like I always recommend, you know, always adjust. You can adjust those pedal noises and, you know, yeah, a lot of times it just gets too clunkety clunk. Uh, and uh, to um, be able to just to have them there just as a seasoning. Um, and the same with the, the key release noises. You know, sometimes the mechanicals, uh, you don't want the mechanicals to overpower the musicality of it, uh, unless that's what you're wanting to do. If you want a, um, a clank, a clankety clank mechanical sound, then crank it up. But um, sometimes you just want just a little taste of that stuff. It's like a muted or a, yeah, it's a really cool thing. The harmonics coming out with that uh, taped preparation there. Um, okay, so let's just look at a couple more. So you get the toys, uh, the harmonica. And that's cool because you can hear the uh, the room, the, the way that, that that is recorded in that room. Um, really interesting. Okay, Caval flute. And that air, the breath, the breathiness. Yeah, it's got some really cool things. Um, and then experimental longs. Yeah, so just the pressure causes the notes to modulate a little bit. Yeah, that's fun. It is. It is. It is a fun. Uh, it is a fun library. And then you've got the recorder. I just think that the way that they captured the, um, you know, these instruments in the, um, in that room, it's just really cool. So you have some drum machine samples. Yeah, just some really cool toys, drum machines, and and you know there we there we go. We've got it. We've got all this really vocal and organic textures, and then they throw a uh, a drum machine there. And this is like a jawbone percussion instrument that they. That's pretty crazy. And um, shakers. Ooh, did you hear that? Listen to that. It's kind of going across. It almost sounds like um, a rain stick type of thing. Very cool, very cool. And then we've got some uh, different loops that they recorded. They recorded these performances down in that uh, Yeah. And 
like I always say, you know, you, when you get a library like this, you've got to go and go through all the patches and through all the loops and experiment and find the things that speak to you. And then you can click them as favorites and uh, be able to go back to them later. So, wow. And then he sampled uh, a lot of his, um, his synth uh, synthesizers there. I think he's got some classic Roland. Wow, no, that's kind of crazy. And then we've got um, little ADSR things going on here for that synth. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's a loop. So you hold on to that and you can hear it kind of going crazy. And then we can play with these. The distortion kind of crank that up. Okay, let's just look at a couple more of these. Comfortable Blizzard. Yeah. So that's kind of pulling in some different things. So you mix the organic with the electronic and it just takes you into another, another place. Okay, one more, Pollination Dance. And uh, man, we've got a lot of, yeah. And see, that gets a uh, little idea started. almost like a little pluck type of thing. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. So that's the pool, that's the, uh, that's the pool project.